So I went to log into my storage server this morning. And when I logged in, I got a red notification from a script that I created to check the health of my RAID 5 disks that the RAID was not active and no RAID was found. When I entered my password to attempt to mount this encrypted RAID, it gave me an error, again built in through the script, that there was an issue loading the encrypted RAID device. So this got me worried, so I started checking each device. And we can see here that on SDE1, I got a message saying that no MD superblock detected. So I checked the last disk of the RAID set and it was also fine. Then I checked proc MD stat to see what the status of the RAID 5 was. And you can see the very last line there. It has some U's and then an underscore and then U, 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 U. Those mean up and one of the disks was not up inside the RAID. So I'm going to start checking smart mon tools. And we can see here in smart mon, this is the disk with the issues. And as I was scrolling by there, I saw that there was multiple errors through the smart monitoring. Okay, and then we can see here for five relocated sector, the RAL value is one. Now one relocated sector isn't a big deal for most of the part, but in this case, the relocated sector actually was part of a section of the disk that caused it to fail pretty badly. And then going through the rest of these, there are multiple errors in here that indicate that there are a lot of bad blocks on the disk. So I'm just using LSBLK to get the serial number of the disk. So you can see here the disk ends with 5AN4. And it looks like it's in hardware spot 4 on the motherboard. This doesn't end up at being accurate, but we'll go ahead and we'll take out that drive and we will replace it. So I called up my local computer shop and they had a brand new matching disk within the hour for me to pick up. Okay, so to replace our old disk that is failing in our RAID on the server, we'll need to take off this tray so that it will fit properly into the server. So let's get that undone. Okay, now that this is on there, let's go and plug this into the server and we will rebuild our RAID. Okay, so we're going to take our new drive and we're going to slide it in right here. Okay, so we'll reconnect to our server. I've put the drive in and rebooted it. We'll cancel mounting the RAID because it's not set up. Okay, and we can check the status of the RAID. It should be stopped because we powered the machine on and we haven't started it yet. This RAID array needs to be manually started after a reboot. I have that like that for security reasons, which is why we also have an encrypted home user so that when that user logs in, it runs a script that will mount this using a key file that is in the home directory, hence it being encrypted. So you can't just take the drive out, find out what the encrypted key is to unlock this RAID. Maybe one day I will go over how that works in my setup, but let's just take a look at the RAID currently. 
So it shouldn't be showing up as raid zero, which is strange. Might just be an error. Okay, so the video of partitioning the disk and adding the disk to the raid had gotten corrupted somehow. Portions of it I can't find. It's not really recoverable. So I'm going to recreate the steps that I went through to do this. It's a little bit later in the day. This is already fixed, but just to show you the steps that I went through to add the disk to the encrypted RAID 5 array that I have, I'll go through the steps. So the first thing I did was went and I copied a partition table from another disk that is already a part of the RAID. So we can do sudo fdisk dev slash sdf is the one that I copied. So if we go to M for help, we can see here that there's an option to dump disk layout. Okay, so you, at capital O, we'll ask you for a name. We'll just name this disk SDF. Okay, and then we can exit here and we can go to our SDE drive, which is the disk that we just added of the brand new disk. Okay, and we can push M for help and we can see the options here. And one of the options is to print the partition table. So we'll go ahead and print that. And we'll see that we have a disk identifier here. And then we'll load our saved SDF script file with a capital I. And then it will ask us for the name. So that was disk SDF. Oops, disk SDF with capitals. So I disk SDF with capitals. Let's get this right this time. Okay, so you'll see that the partition layout was loaded and it also changed our GUID here to match the same as the SDF disk. We don't want that, so we'll generate a new one. So if we go to M, we can see that there's extra functionality with the option X. So we'll go to X and in here, there is an option at the top I to change the disk GUID. So we'll go I, and we will just go back up to the original disk identifier GUID here, and we'll use that. Then we can select P to print our partition. That is the information. We can choose R to go back to the regular non-expert command window. Hit P again, and this gives us all our information. Okay, then we can do W to write and exit. And that will create the partition that we need for this disk to add it back to the RAID 5 array. So W and enter. I'm going to quit because I don't need to do this. It's already done. So let's go to the next step. So now that we have our SDE1 partition created, we can go ahead and add that to our RAID 5 array. And we do that with a sudo mdadm dash dash add. So we're going to add to the MD5 array. That's what my RAID 5 array is called. And the device that we're adding to it is dev slash SDE1. So once you issue that command, it will add it. And then you'll be able to go into cat proc slash MD stat and you'll be able to see the rebuild process in progress. And I will jump to that clip here. That is the next section. Okay, it looks like our RAID 5 rebuild is completed. And our SDE 
one partition as a part of the RAID 5. So let's give the machine a reboot and we'll see if it comes back in a healthy state. So the rebuild took about, I want to say about eight hours total time from when we started, maybe a little bit more than eight hours. And it went pretty steadily, not really any hiccups. So let's see if we can log back in here. Okay, we can see that our RAID status is active and all disks are up and the health is okay. That is just a little script that I've created on login. Okay, so now we can... mount everything so it mounts and all my services start and we should be off to the races with a new disk and our raid established and we can see our raid details here for our, our raid 5 disk and we're back up and running so disaster has been averted i will check out this disk i've actually plugged this disk back into another linux machine and ran some tests on it it is pretty dead. It locks up the machine. It can't really read properly. And when I run a test on it, the test dies after about 10 minutes and just hangs indefinitely. It also makes a little bit of read and write noise that's very repeatable. It repeats quite often this exact same pattern. So there's definitely issues with it. Unfortunately, it's out of warranty. It's going on seven years now. It's actually it's one month shy of seven years from the day it was manufactured. So, you know, I got some good use out of this drive. I still have another drive that I bought up this as a pair. The other drive is still working and still running. And they've got quite a few years on them. They've got over six years of uptime. So let's see if we can see that drive. Smartmon. Actually, now that I think about it, I purchased three of these discs at the same time. And this one here is one of them. So let's check the power on time of this disc. So we can see this serial number here closely matches the serial number of the drive that failed. And we can see here power on hours, 57,000 hours. That's six and a half years. So pretty close to the full time that I've owned these drives, they've been powered on for the most part and running. Not too bad. And this one doesn't have any errors, so even better. Okay, so I hope this is showing you how MDADM works and how a RAID 5 in a Linux machine works when you're trying to do a recovery and what to look for. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and that'll be that for this video. Everything's up and running and I'm back into production with this. Bye.